Come with me. There's something I want to show you. Hey, mister. Got a name? Mickey Rourke is an American actor, screenwriter, producer, and former professional boxer. The man gained fame for his role in the cult film Nine and a Half Weeks. Thanks to it, he became a sex symbol, although his fame faded quite quickly. In this video, we will tell you about the highs and lows of this bright Hollywood star's life. Mickey Rourke – What Happened to the Nine and a Half Week Star? I feel a little lucky tonight. Mickey Rourke, whose real name is Philip Andre Rourke Jr., was born on September 16, 1952, in the city of Schenectady, New York. His mother, Annette, was of English and French-Canadian descent, and his father, Philip, had Irish and German ancestry. The future actor became the firstborn in the family and was named after his father. Soon, two more children were born, son Joseph and daughter Patricia. Over time, to avoid confusion with Philip Sr., the family began to call the boy Mickey in honor of the famous baseball player Mickey Mantle, a fan of whom was his bodybuilder father. Rourke's parents' relationships were quite complicated. The spouses constantly quarreled and finally divorced when Philip Jr. turned six. Then, Annette and the children moved to Liberty City, a suburb of Miami predominantly populated by African Americans. There, the woman married for the second time to retired police officer Eugene Addis, who, by that time, already had five children from previous marriages. Annette's new spouse was a very abusive person and immediately disliked her children, especially the eldest, Mickey, who was the most free-spirited kid. The man often beat his wife and her children and demanded unconditional obedience. Later, Rourke admitted that he wanted to stand up to his stepfather but didn't have the guts to do it at that time. Annette silently put up with the man's behavior, and Mickey had never forgiven her for it. Later, he didn't even attend his mother's funeral because of her silent consent to the stepdad's abuse. Also, back then, he decided that he probably would never become a father. Due to the never-ending family scandals, the future actor spent most of his time in the deprived neighborhood, where he naturally hung out with the wrong crowd. In order to defend himself, both on the street and at home, Rourke began to learn self-defense techniques and was quite successful. Soon, the guy became a regular at the famous Fifth Street Gym in Miami Beach and performed in the ring under the nickname Mickey the Mouse. At the age of 12, he won his first boxing match as a bantamweight using the name Phil Rourke. However, the teenager had to pay for his boxing achievements with his health. At the age of 17, Mickey suffered a serious concussion during a match. When the situation repeated two years later at the Florida Golden Gloves, doctors strongly recommended he end his boxing career, although he did so only several years later. In 1971, Rourke graduated from Miami Beach Senior High School, where he earned a reputation as quite a troubled student. The only subject he excelled in was physical education. Rourke did not like other subjects and had poor academic performance. In addition, he played for the school baseball team and attended the drama classes of acting teacher Jay Jensen in South Florida. Under his guidance, the school staged the play The Serpent, in which Rourke had a minor role. The guy also participated in the production of the play Death Watch, directed by his friend. At that time, Mickey was already considering acting as a career as he had to give up his favorite boxing. In 1973, he ended his amateur boxing career with 27 wins, including 17 knockouts and 3 losses. To support himself at the time, Rourke took on any job. In particular, he dug trenches, starting his work at 5 in the morning. He was so exhausted that, at some point, he decided to radically change his line of work and get involved in criminal activities. Until 1975, Mickey was involved in the illegal drug trade, but one day, he narrowly escaped death during a shootout. After this incident, the young man quit crime and, borrowing $400 from his sister, moved to New York. By the way, before leaving, Rourke made sure to get back at his stepfather and knocked out two of his teeth. In New York, Mickey set a goal to become an actor. He settled in a cheap hotel in Manhattan and took on any job to earn money for further education. The guy worked as a bouncer, a pool cleaner, and a street vendor. Soon, Mickey managed to enroll in the prestigious Lee Strasberg's Actors Studio, and he did it on his first attempt. Having surpassed several thousand applicants, he became one of the five students of the studio that year. 
For example, Jack Nicholson was accepted only on his fifth try and Dustin Hoffman on his eighth. Later, one of the founders of the studio called Rourke's audition the best in the last 30 years. The short movie Love in the Hamptons should be considered Mickey's first film. However, the project was frozen for a long time, and its premiere took place only in 2009, 33 years later after the start of the filming. In 1978, the young man moved to Los Angeles to conquer Hollywood. However, nobody welcomed the aspiring actor with open arms there. He attended lots of casting calls but wasn't offered any roles, even minor ones. Fortunately, in 1979, Rourke was noticed by Steven Spielberg, who invited him to play a supporting role in the war comedy 1941. This role became Mickey's debut. In the following years, Mickey appeared in the drama movies Act of Love, City in Fear, Heaven's Gate, and Rape and Marriage, The Ride Out Case, as well as the crime thrillers Fade to Black and Body Heat. During the same period, the actor had a short-lived relationship with model Gia Karanji, who died of AIDS a few years later. In 1981, Rourke starred in the crime mystery film Hard Case, which was likely a pilot for a canceled TV series. During the filming, he met aspiring actress Deborah Fuhr. The two fell in love and shortly afterward got married. The wedding took place in a chapel at the top of a cliff overlooking Los Angeles. According to some reports, Mickey himself organized the wedding, planning every aspect of the event. The following year, the actor appeared in the romantic drama Diner. After that, one could see him in the thriller Eureka and the crime drama Rumblefish. The latter was based on the novel by American writer Susan Hinton, who personally appeared in the film playing a promiscuous girl. Rourke played a biker and handled his character brilliantly. It became a breakthrough and one of the most iconic roles in his career. Main and title is Robin Hood by Piper Bull. You know, I'd just soon stay in neighborhood novelty if it's all the same to you. Mm. In 1984, the actor played one of the lead roles in the crime comedy film The Pope of Greenwich Village. For this project, Mickey gained 20 pounds. By the way, he considered this project his happiest filming experience. Joe, it's Bimbo Broad you're getting started. It's Johnny Mac's private start. Who's getting started? Huh? What am I doing? Later, Rourke appeared in the crime thriller film Year of the Dragon. He also starred in the erotic drama Nine and a Half Weeks, depicting the romance between the investor John, who's played by Rourke, and the divorced gallery assistant Elizabeth, portrayed by Kim Bassinger. But your business is very risky, isn't it? Well, it's, it's not any riskier than you coming here. Coming out here where there's no neighbors around. I mean, we hardly know each other. You really don't know me. For this role, Mickey lost 30 pounds. Interestingly enough, the director, aiming to evoke the necessary emotions from the main characters, employed a manipulation tactic that was later criticized by Bassinger. He prohibited the actors from interacting off the set and intentionally spread rumors about Rourke to make Kim express her disgust towards him on set. The actress admitted that kissing Mickey on the screen was like kissing an ashtray, and the actor even got a nickname, the Human Ashtray. As a result, it took them 23 years to reconcile. Anyway, their efforts were not in vain, and the film became a cult classic, bringing Mickey not only worldwide fame but also the title of a sex symbol. However, initially the film was not well received in the US and even received three Razzie nominations. Also, Mickey received a $500,000 paycheck. In 1987, Rourke starred in the drama thriller A Prayer for the Dying, playing an Irish Republican army fighter and the drama Barfly, portraying a poet suffering from alcoholism. Interestingly enough, Sean Penn wanted to play the protagonist in the latter film so much that he was willing to do it for free, but the director chose Mickey. By the way, Rourke had to remove two front teeth to get the role. I don't ever want to fall in love. Nobody's ever loved me yet. In the same year, the psychological horror Angel Art was released, in which Rourke played the lead role of private detective Harry Angel. But the cops might think I did. Mm. Hey, look, I took on a $125 a day missing persons job with you. Now I'm a murder suspect. That's it. I'm out. He handled the task brilliantly, and his role became one of the best in his career. He also received a $1.25 million paycheck. Robert De Niro also appeared in this movie, 
By the way, Mickey has been at odds with this actor for many years, and later, De Niro did everything he could to prevent Mickey from getting roles in movies. However, at that time, Rourke was at the peak of his popularity and was considered one of the highest paid actors in Hollywood. Offers poured in one after another. For example, he could have starred in such popular films as Top Gun, Beverly Hills Cop, and Rain Man, but he declined, regretting it later. Interestingly enough, the actor also turned down the role of Butch in Quentin Tarantino's legendary film Pulp Fiction. In the end, the role went to Bruce Willis. In 1988, Mickey played the lead role and co-wrote the sports drama Homeboy under the pseudonym of Sir Eddie Cook. He portrayed boxer Johnny Walker, and for this role, he was gaining weight over eight months. Man, I just like to be able to look at her and just, just, I could just look at her and just hold her. And she's so pretty. Interestingly enough, after the release of the film, Bob Dylan called Rourke's acting a source of inspiration for the last two songs on his album, Oh Mercy. By the way, his character's wife was played by Mickey's real wife, Deborah Fuhr. However, outside the film set, their family life was not going well. Deborah recalled that when she first met Rourke, he was very modest and vulnerable. But with the onset of popularity, he began to abuse alcohol and illicit substances, which she could not accept. The actor himself justified his behavior with his difficult childhood and long-standing grievances. Despite their divorce after eight years of marriage, the two managed to remain friends. In the following years, Mickey had flings with model Kristen Bolster, actress Terry Farrell, and tennis player Gabriella Sabatini. In 1989, Rourke starred in the historical drama film Francesco and the crime thriller film Johnny Handsome, playing a small-time criminal named Johnny born with a disfigured face. Makeup artists would spend three hours daily to create the necessary look. You people did a terrific job. <laughs> I still feel like I'm wearing a mask. Mickey also played the lead role in the erotic drama Wild Orchid, where he met model Carrie Otis and fell madly in love with her. Interestingly enough, Mickey noticed the beautiful girl at the casting call and told the director that he would only film with her. I got everything I, I thought that I ever wanted. And it still wasn't enough. It was rumored that during the intimate scene, the passion between the partners was so intense that they could barely control themselves, resulting in very emotional shots. Several years after the film's release, the lovers got married. In 1990, Mickey starred in the crime action film Desperate Hours, for which he received a Razzie nomination. It was quite fair, as Rourke was no longer putting in the same effort on the set as before and the directors were upset that he regularly disrupted shoots, engaging in drunken debauchery. A year later, the actor played the lead role in the crime action film Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man. With a budget of $23 million, the film failed at the box office, only collecting $7 million, while Mickey received a $2.75 million paycheck. Film critics noted weak acting and multiple plot holes in the movie. What do you want? Oh, how's about two and a half million dollars? Now, wait a minute, check that. I got a little side bet going. Make that two and a half million dollars plus a buck. During that period, Mickey's career went into decline. The disappointments were so profound that he decided to return to professional boxing. Starting from 1991, he trained diligently and participated in boxing matches for four years under the pseudonym Mary Lito. He earned $250 for his professional debut, but by the end of the second year, he was already receiving $1 million per fight. In total, the boxer participated in eight matches, six of which ended in victory for him. However, he had significant health issues. He experienced six hand fractures, four concussions, five nasal fractures, coordination disorders, and other injuries. These health problems forced the celebrity to end his boxing career. Meanwhile, Mickey's filmography continued to grow. In 1992, he starred in the crime thriller film White Sands, and the following year, he appeared in the western film The Last Outlaw. In 1994, the romantic drama FTW, also known as The Last Ride, was released, in which he not only played one of the lead roles, but also worked as a screenwriter, 
However, at that time, most media attention was focused not on his career but on his tumultuous relationship. The couple often had scandals, and Rourke was even arrested and accused of domestic violence. In the end, Mickey asked Carrie for forgiveness, and the charges were dropped, but the incident became a serious issue for the celebrity. In 1995, Rourke starred in the crime drama Fall Time, and a year later, he appeared in the drama film Exit in Red and the crime film Bullet, where he also worked as a screenwriter. You better take a good long look in that mirror, because once you get in this game, there ain't no turning back. His co-star was Tupac Shakur. Interestingly enough, in the film, the actors played enemies, but in real life, they became close friends. During the shooting, Rourke and Shakur shared a room at the Plaza Hotel in New York, owned by Donald Trump. Once, they made a mess in the room, causing damage amounting to $7,000. As a result, Trump sued the actors, leading to a long-lasting mutual animosity. In 1997, the actor appeared in the romantic drama film Love in Paris, also known as Another Nine and a Half Weeks, the thriller The Rainmaker, and the comedy action film Double Team, where he co-starred with Jean-Claude Van Damme. I'm going to give you a chance to save your son. And if you don't, I'll raise him as my own. To prepare for his role in the latter, Rourke had to undergo intensive martial arts training. In 1998, Mickey appeared in the drama films Buffalo 66 and Thicker Than Blood, as well as the crime action films Point Blank and Thursday. During the same period, the war drama The Thin Red Line was released, which received seven Oscar nominations. Rourke also participated in the shooting, but ultimately all scenes with him were cut, and he was only thanked in the credits. In the same year, the actor's marriage came to an end. Constant relationship troubles led to Carrie filing for divorce. Mickey tried to win her back and attract her attention in every possible way, but she still left him for good. However, even after the divorce, the former spouses could not find happiness. The girl abused illicit substances, and Mickey fell into a deep depression. Still, he managed to seek help from a therapist in time. Over 10 years, Rourke missed only two therapy sessions. Also, during all these years, he was keeping in touch with a priest who had a significant influence on him. In 1999, Mickey appeared in the comedy drama movie Shades and the crime films Out in 50 and Shergar. However, these movies brought the actor neither his previous popularity nor significant paychecks. Rourke's career was on the decline. Once a heartthrob and the favorite actor of millions, he lost his attractiveness due to numerous injuries he suffered in the ring. To regain his former appearance, Rourke turned to plastic surgeons. Unfortunately, the surgeries were not successful and disfigured his face even more. This became a real blow for the celebrity, as he could hardly watch his old movies. The situation also had an impact on the actor's career. During that period, he wasn't offered high paychecks and lived on $200 a week. In the early 2000s, Mickey starred in the criminal drama Animal Factory, the BMW short film The Hire, The Follow, the horror They Crawl, as well as the thrillers The Pledge, Picture Claire, and Get Carter. I hooked up with this freak and this foreign guy. Created my own little empire. Look at you. The little man versus the startup. Interestingly enough, the film studio initially hesitated to hire Rourke due to his tarnished reputation. However, Sylvester Stallone, a friend of Mickey's who was part of the cast, literally convinced the producers to give the role to Rourke. Stallone even agreed to contribute a part of his own paycheck in case Rourke caused any issues on set. Nevertheless, Rourke showed up to the shoots on time and delivered an excellent performance. During this period, Mickey also portrayed a villain in Enrique Iglesias' music video for Hero. In 2002, he took a role in the criminal drama film Spun. By the way, Rourke admitted that he initially didn't want to be part of this film as he disliked the script, but financial constraints led him to accept the project. Additionally, he had a fling with Russian model Diana Kaufman, but it did not lead to anything serious. In 2003, Rourke appeared in the musical drama Masked and Anonymous and the criminal action film Once Upon a Time in Mexico, where he worked with Antonio Banderas, Salma Hayek, and Johnny Depp. I've been on the run hiding out here down in Mexico for the last eight years. And, uh, I've been working for this here cartel for the last four. Then he appeared in the crime thriller Man on Fire, 
and action films Domino and Sin City. In the latter, he portrayed Mar, a brutal enforcer with exceptional intelligence. And, interestingly enough, Mickey became the first actor officially approved for the role. I was waking up every damn day and not even knowing why you're here. But I'm out now. I know exactly what I gotta do. That time, Rourke's previous unsuccessful plastic surgeries worked in his favor, and he performed brilliantly. After the film's release, he was honored with the Saturn Award for Best Supporting Actor. Also, Mickey's imperfect appearance did not hinder his dating life. In 2005, he had a brief romance with Ukrainian model Sasha Volkova. In 2006, he appeared in the action film Stormbreaker as an American named Darius Sale. Initially, the character was meant to be Lebanese, but the filmmakers adjusted the script to fit Rourke. The following year, Rourke faced legal troubles as he was arrested for driving under the influence in Miami Beach. A few years later, he found himself in a similar situation. In 2008, he starred in the criminal thriller Kill Shot and the sports drama The Wrestler, where he portrayed Randy the Ram Robinson, a former wrestling star. Doc, I'm a professional wrestler. You almost died. Next time you might not be so lucky. Well, hey, Doc. <laughs> Thanks for all the good news. Before filming, Mickey underwent six months of training with an Israeli army instructor, consuming six meals a day to gain almost 30 pounds of muscle. The film was largely based on the celebrity's own life and allowed him to reclaim his former glory. Following its release, Mickey received nominations for the Screen Actors Guild Award, an Oscar, and won a Golden Globe and a BAFTA. Notably, he dedicated the British Academy Film Award to Irish actor Richard Harris, calling him a good friend and a great actor. The man also appeared at WrestleMania 25, where he knocked out wrestling champion Chris Jericho. During this period, Rourke not only boasted career achievements, but also a tumultuous dating life. Within a year, his list of romantic interests included Chinese actress Bai Ling, Russian models Eugenia Volodina, and Elena Kuletskaya, and reportedly American singer Courtney Love. Soon after that, Mickey fell in love again, this time with Russian model Anastasia Makarenko, who was 33 years his junior. For Anastasia, Rourke began learning Russian and underwent plastic surgery twice. Unfortunately, the surgeries did not bring the desired results and further disfigured his appearance. After six years of relationships, the couple eventually parted ways. However, the media reports that the former lovers occasionally reconcile and rekindle their relationship. During this period, Mickey appeared in the crime thrillers The Informers and 13, where one of the actors was the celebrity's former bodyguard, Chuck Zito. Also, Rourke appeared in the melodrama Passion Play and the action film The Expendables. I don't want to die all alone full of holes in the mud and blood. I'm going to die with something that counts. I'm going to die with a woman. I'm going to die with someone. Rourke confessed that he took on the latter project to express gratitude to Stallone, who had saved his declining career a few years earlier. Around the same time, Mickey starred in the sci-fi action film Iron Man 2, portraying the intimidating Ivan Vanko. You come from a family of thieves and butchers, and now, like all guilty men, you try to rewrite your own history. In order to prepare for the role, he visited a Russian prison and spent $20,000 on gold teeth. Interestingly enough, it was Rourke's suggestion to have his character speak partially in Russian. He also proposed adding a cockatoo to the script to humanize the villain. He purchased a white bird named Sonny, who eventually became a character in the film. For his role, Mickey received an MTV Movie Award nomination for Best Villain as well as a $400,000 paycheck. In 2011, the actor starred in the fantasy action film Immortals, and a year later, he appeared in the crime thriller The Courier and the action drama Black November. Subsequently, Rourke added more movies to his filmography, including the western film Dead in Tombstone and the crime action films Java Heat and Sin City A Dame to Kill For. In 2015, Mickey appeared in the drama Ashby and the action films Skin Traffic, Blunt Force Drama, and War Pigs but these movies went relatively unnoticed. In 2016, Rourke was featured in the action film Swap, and a year later he played a minor role in the comedy series Dice. In 2018, the actor starred in the drama Tiger and the horror film Nightmare Cinema, where he also worked as a producer. The following year, he could be seen in the crime action film Nightwalk and the romantic drama movie Berlin, I Love You. 
Around the same time, Rourke's Instagram featured a photo of Estonian model Carmen Pedaru with the caption, Best Wishes Beauty, sparking rumors of another romance in the actor's list. In 2020, Mickey appeared in the historical action film The Legion and thrillers Adverse and Girl. The next year, the actor played a paralyzed man in the biographical drama Man of God. I don't understand why guy it just didn't let me die when I fell off that cliff. In an interview, Rourke admitted that he took part in the film because the project focused on spiritual matters rather than monetary gain. Mickey also starred in the action film Take Back, also working as a producer. In 2022, Rourke appeared in the horror film War Hunt, the thriller Section 8, and the action film The Commando, where he also took on a producer role. We got some serious shit we gotta take care of, right? Just, um, don't let nothing f it up, all right? You hear me? We got you. We got it. Just keep it cool until we get the job done. During this period, in one of his interviews, Rourke shared his views on the war in Ukraine. He expressed deep concern about the ongoing situation and voiced support for the Ukrainian people, urging Putin to stop the horror. Interestingly enough, just a few years ago, he held a positive opinion of the Russian president and even wore a t-shirt with his portrait. It is worth noting that even before the full-scale war began, Mickey shocked the public with his will in which he requested to be buried in Ukraine, in the village of Zahirtsi. However, it is unknown whether his decision has changed now. Recently, Rourke has been less involved in film. However, in 2023, the comedy The Palace and the action film Hunt Club were released. Currently, the filming of the horror film Three Days Rising, the dramas A Walking Miracle and Replica, the thriller Murder at Hollow Creek, and the comedy Not Another Church Movie has been completed. Additionally, action films In the Night and The Mob Priest are in the pre-production stage. In his free time, Mickey practices Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Throughout his career, Mickey has appeared in numerous commercials. He could be seen in advertisements for Guinness and Bavaria Beer, Lark Cigarettes, Japanese brands Suntory Reserve and Daihatsu, Snickers, and the betting company Melbet. As of today, the celebrity's net worth is estimated at $10 million, which is significantly less than the earnings of his Hollywood colleagues. However, this figure is still not bad, considering that when Rourke's career was on the decline, he lived in rented apartments in New York and could barely afford food. However, at the peak of his fame, the actor owned a mansion in Beverly Hills, which he sold due to financial difficulties in the late 1990s. One of the rented apartments is associated with a scandalous story. In 2014, Mickey got evicted from an apartment in the Tribeca area for non-payment of rent. His debt amounted to $30,000. Moreover, the landlord sued Mickey for damaging his property. After Rourke had lived in the apartment, it needed serious repair, as the bathtub and doors were damaged. Also, the actor installed disco balls there without anyone's permission. The damage was estimated at $10,000. Previously, the actor owned a townhouse in New York, distinguished by its sophistication and unique style. Visiting him was akin to visiting a museum. Currently, Mickey resides in his mansion in Los Angeles with numerous pets. The actor is known for his love of small dogs. Once, he even built a dog shelter in Romania the size of a football field costing 1.5 million euros. When shooting one of his movies in this country, the actor learned about a large number of stray dogs and could not ignore the problem. Mickey also owned several cars, a Bentley Continental GT, a convertible, and a classic Mini Cooper. Rourke is also known as a passionate motorcycle enthusiast. At the peak of his career, he had a collection of bikes, which he sold due to financial problems in the late 1990s. Regardless of his financial situation, Mickey regularly donates to charity. Despite his scandalous reputation, many of the actor's colleagues speak of him as a kind and very sensitive person. What about you? Do you like Mickey Rourke? I'll see you maniacs in a little while. Alright, I'll be back. I'll be back. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.